Looking for the best card game accessories? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products providing priceless protection. Shop at Ultimate Guard through the link in the description and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at a mono green ramp deck featuring four copies of Gruff Triplets as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. A 3-3 Satyr Warrior with Trample. When it enters the battlefield, if it isn't a token, create two tokens that are copies of it. And when the triplets dies, put a number of plus one plus one counters equal to its power on each creature we control named Gruff Triplets. So we start out with three 3-3 three, three triplets. If one of them dies, we're left with a pair of 6-6 six, six triplets. And if one of those dies, we could be left with a 12-12, and of course triplets is also great in multiples, since the more we have in play, the more powerful the ability also becomes, and going wide with a bunch of creatures is perfect when we're planning to win the game with a Nissa ultimate, the minus 7, says until end of turn, creatures we control get plus 1 plus 1 for each forest we control, and again trample, so that's why we see all those basic forests in our mana base, as well as 4 copies of Awaken the Woods, which can create X11 green forest dried land creature tokens, so that's a great mana sink. If we have a bunch of mana, we can make a lot of 1-1 tokens, but the tokens also count as forests, which will count towards Nissa's ultimate, so curving Awaken the Woods into Nissa can be a very deadly combination. Then Nissa can also generate large tokens with the plus one, or potentially destroy artifacts or enchantments with the minus one, and thanks to the completed mana cost, it's also quite versatile. And then our early ramp consists of two copies of Azusa's Many Journeys. Not my favorite ramp card, but we have 25 lands to hopefully always have something extra to put in play. And then we also have a Vorinclex finding two forests, which also helps. And uh, it is still a way to get additional lands in play to not only enable Nessa's ultimate, but also to have our Topiary Stomper attack and block a turn sooner potentially. So that's also very helpful. Stomper 4-4 four, four Vigilance that can only attack and block if we have seven or more lands in play and gets to search up a base basic land when it enters. We also have four copies of Gala Greeters, which can make treasure tokens when creatures enter, so it has a great synergy with Awaken the Woods making lots of tokens, and it also works quite well with our Gruff Triplets, as we get to enable all three modes on Gala Greeters, getting a plus one counter, gaining two, and making a tapped treasure. And then two copies of the Iron Crag, an excellent way to ramp, as it's not a creature that's easily removed by the opponent, but it is legendary, so I'm only playing two copies, since we only have the one legendary creature to transform it into an equipment, so if we draw the second one, we're going to be pretty sad. And then we've got two copies of Return from the Wilds, which can both find a forest, as well as create a human token, for instance, which can then also trigger Gala Greeters to make an extra treasure, so these can also curve quite nicely into each other. And then Topiary Stomper, eventually a 4-4, as we mentioned. Tribute to the World Tree is also quite nice. Triple green, so only really castable in a mono green deck. And then if a creature enters the battlefield, if it had power 3 or greater, we get to draw a card. Otherwise, put two plus one plus one counters on it, so we can grow our smaller creatures, like Gala Greeters and the 1 1 tokens from Awaken the Woods. But if we're transforming an Azusa's Many Journeys or if we're casting a Gruff Triplets, we get to draw three cards in that case. So that's where we get our value from Tribute. And then at 4 mana, there's two copies of Invasion of Zendikar to find two lands, maybe transform it into a Skyclave. Can also have great synergy with Tribute once it transforms, drawing us an extra card. And curving Stomper into Invasion is also quite nice, as we can potentially attack the Invasion right away. And then we mentioned Awaken the Woods, great at any point in our curve, can also cast it for x equals 1 if we don't have anything else going on. And then at 5 mana, 3 copies of Invoke the Ancients, which gives us the choice of 2 4 5 creatures with either Vigilance, Reach, and or Trample. So we can kind of mix and match, so if we're facing a bunch of flying creatures then we might want Reach, if we want to attack and block then Vigilance. Trample, probably not necessary when our Nissa ultimate already gives our creatures trample, but it is still an option. And then as we mentioned, one Vorinclex can transform Iron Crag and finds two forests when it enters to ensure our next couple land drops can also transform it into the Grand Evolution, which can help win the game. And then as we mentioned, four copies of Triplets and four copies of Nissa, which is our primary win condition. And then just 24 forests and one Boseju, so no creature lands since we want to increase the forest count for the Nissa ultimate. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. We're missing a potential mana sink with all the mana we can generate with double wake in the woods. And a hunter's maze here is pretty interesting. So they might be playing that artifact that searches up additional lands. 
turn two naturalists and maybe just green white enchantments after all. I think the sequencing is going to be greeters and then next turn iron crank plus greeters, hopefully with one still in play. So for now, Weaver of Harmony. And an Audacity on the Naturalist, so if they ever find Calyx, that's going to be pretty scary. And yeah, Trample also a good way to get past a bunch of 1-1s. One so not liking my initial chances. Gruff Triplets was a good pickup. Now I do have a Boseju in hand, which can also blow up one of the opponent's enchantments. Although going Iron Crag into Greeters is still probably better here. Can make a treasure. And then next turn we could already play the triplets if we want to. It's gonna be Kami. They could still cast a Calyx for two mana. Luckily just a Weaver of Harmony. And then an attack for 12 here. Yeah, I'll have to take it. So we're at three. Luckily, triplets can enable all three of the greeter's abilities. And hope to dodge ossification here to exile our creatures. There we go. Back up to seven. And we'll see if this is enough to stabilize. Because Ossification, copied with Weaver's ability, can clear multiple blockers here. Just a Naturalist, okay, that's manageable. We do have a Nissa in hand, although only three forests in play. What happens if I double block with the Triplets? They die at the same time. I think I only block with one of the Triplets here. And then take two Trample as opposed to putting another Greeters in front. Our opponent could activate Weaver of Harmony, I believe, on the Audacity trigger. To draw an extra card. We'll see if they notice. They did. So they get to draw two cards, another Iron Crag, not very helpful. So if I were to play Nissa, I could give the team plus three and trample until end of turn. Not that exciting. But going Greeters into Awaken the Woods for X equals 3 isn't bad, since we get to trigger Greeters all the way. We're still in serious trouble if our opponent found Ossification here. But I think this is still the best I can do. And then we're not in a position to attack. And yeah, this Nissa ultimate is far from lethal. We can of course also use it to destroy artifacts or enchantments. But uh, not as exciting as just winning with an ultimate. So Triple Weaver of Harmony, still not enough to get past the Gruff Triplets, but another Audacity will help. So they make it 8 power. Yeah, don't really want to trade and have them draw 2 extra cards basically with double Weaver activation. So what happens if I just take 8? I fall to 1, pawn goes up to 46. I have now 6 forests in play. Alright, pawn going for an all-out attack. So there's no easy blocks here, but at least now that the uh, weavers are tapped, I don't mind trading for naturalists. So we still have 2 tramples, so we're essentially at 7. So yeah, this needs to be blocked by at least one creature. Let's say Weaver blocks there. Gala Greeters will finish off Weaver once it shrinks down. This can eat Visitor for free. Chump, chump, chump. So we still take five, six, seven Trample. So I guess this way we take eight Trample total. So I'm not dead. We kill Weaver of Harmony times two. We kill Generous Visitor for free. Yeah, this looks okay to me. And then we get to grow Gruff Triplets as well. And our opponent only draws one card. 
Could have also put a 2-2 in front of Companion, so that eventually dies when Double Weaver dies. So our opponent's down to three creatures. We've got a huge triplet, and we'll see what they top decked. Nothing that they played right now. So I can only play in this if I pay full price, since we don't have life to spare here. And then I could either destroy Weaver or make a token. Which can also gain life with Gala Greeters. Let's try that. And then I could keep an extra Forest back. I think the treasure could still come in handy. Yeah, I think we're going to be in trouble against an ossification either way, since it can also just exile Nissa. Opponent's going to draw with Hunter Maze. Yeah, I'll just make a token. It is large. And then now I can gain two, so we're at three. Not in a position to attack, unfortunately. This is just a waiting game until ossification or Rex or Day. Katilda is also very good. Cannot destroy it with Nissa. don't have any reach creatures, but we could maybe gain enough life with Gala Greeters to survive. Alright, Invoke the Ancients was perfect, can make two reach creatures with it. And then now I might be at a point where I want to minus Nissa to destroy Weaver of Harmony, so I don't instantly lose to an ossification. Although making another token is also tempting to set up a lethal overrun in the following turns. So reach and reach. And greeters can gain life. And we'll go with probably a treasure here. Okay. And then do we want to attack with triplets if they remove the 8 8? So this can attack. Hmm, close call. I think I do start attacking now. We do have to make a dent in the opponent's life total. And at least I'm not dead to a single ossification. Reign of Truth, that's pretty good. Use it on the Trampler, perhaps. Or on Katilda, can still double block it. And then trade 8 8 for Kami. Opponent's just going face. Well, they might have the trick giving plus one plus one through the uh, a royal roll. So that would also add another enchantment for Katilda. So this could grow up to an 8 8, so we're still good to trade there. But they could kind of blow me out with a Kami a little bit. So it might be worth it to put a Gala Greeters in front there as well. Alright, so trades happen. Pretty happy with that outcome. Reducing the opponent's resources. Okay, an extra forest will power up the ultimates. So are we at a point where we can attack for lethal yet? So four, five forests. Give the team plus five, plus five, and trample. So that's essentially plus 20 damage. Points at 40. So five, seven, 19. I think we're only a couple points short here. So I think then the plan is just make another token, play Stomper, and then next turn we'll certainly have lethal. And then Greeters and Triplets can attack. Still have our reach creature for a disturbed Katilda. So that's likely gonna have to chump. But if they disturb, they shouldn't have enough mana for anything else. Okay, 6-6 six, six, flying a lifelink, so not quite lethal. And it will be chumping. And then next turn we should have a lethal pretty easily. Another Nissa. So I could ultimate twice in one turn here. Just because. And that's enough for lethal. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the play with a nice hand. Turn two greeters, turn three return. Triggers greeters, make a treasure. And then we're on our way to cast Invoke and Nissa Against red aggro, don't expect greeters to survive. But at least if they cast a burn spell, they're less likely to get value from chapter two to get that plus one counter. And then I think I'm still in favor of 1-1 one, one token as opposed to a food token, which is also an option here. Alright, it's going to be a battle mouse, so Greeters survives. And I'll save Awaken the Woods for later. Make a treasure. And then Greeters, if it survives, could also gain life later. Next turn we're looking at Invoke the Ancients, which could trigger Greeters twice, and that would also set up a very powerful Nissa on the following turn. So we'll see. If our opponent just taps out for a Godric, that would be acceptable. Yep. Speak of the Devil, or the Dragon in this case. Celebration is enabled thanks to Kumano transforming. And I will be jumping. I think I prefer Invoke the Ancients over Awaken the Woods, even though Awaken the Woods does set up a potentially lethal Nissa on the following turn. This can help block Godric. I'll still be able to gain life and make a treasure token. And then one reach creature for sure. Do we want a trampler or a vigilant creature maybe? Both are reasonable, but uh, vigilance makes more sense since Nissa already gives trample. And then greeters can attack. Don't plan to block with it. So now we can hopefully hold off Godric, or at least trade for it after they pump it up. It's gonna be a Squee next. They could still cast a Lightning Strike, which is probably what they have, thanks to the discount from Battle Mouse. So that could finish off a 4-5 that blocks a 2-2 creature, for instance. Although then they would lose Godric for free. So yeah, this only pumps power. And then Battle Mouse versus Squee. I guess we'll block Squee, so they need Lightning Strike specifically to finish this off, as opposed to just to play with fire. But I imagine I'll just pump Godric. Okay, we fall to 9. And a Tribute, not bad either. If I play in Nissa, it's only with 5 Forests in place, so not quite lethal. Uh, Stomper plus Awaken the Woods for 1 would get me to 7 lands, so Stomper can actually attack and block. Or I can just cast Awaken the Woods x equals 5, and hope they don't have End of Festivities, pretty much. But then we're definitely going to have a lethal Nissan next turn. I think Stomper plus Awaken is slightly safer here. And then we still get to trigger Gallant Greeters all the way. And then Vigilance can attack, Greeters can also get busy, I think. And then now we certainly have enough forests for a lethal overrun effect. Tribute would have been nice in a grindier matchup, but that's not what this is. Yeah, we're pretty lucky that our Gala Greeters did not get answered immediately. Three cards in hand, with a Battle Mouse getting a discount. They can definitely do some damage here, but I'm liking my chances. It's going to be another Godric. They need another permanent to enable Celebration. And our opponent has seen enough. Don't even need to show them Nissa. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is good, not great. If we draw an extra land, it's actually better since I'll be more likely to get value for my Azusa's Many Journeys and then Awaken the Woods can be more effective at ramping out triplets. Could still use something to close out the game. Of course, Nissa comes to mind. I wouldn't mind the Gala Greeters to go with the triplets. But for now, we're off to a good start. Turn one officer, so likely a soldier's deck. And now I really want to draw another land. So we can potentially play Invasion of Zendikar. Otherwise, it's just Awaken the Woods for one. 
And if they play turn to Thalia, I might not even be able to play anything. Yeah. Alright, at least we found a land, so I could still awaken for one here, which is not pretty, but a necessity. And then with another land, play triplets. If not, we can at least play our Invasion of Zendikar if they don't deal with our token. Gonna be a Knight Errant, so at least no Brutal Cathar to exile my Dryad. Finding a couple more creatures. Okay. So, I can awaken for two. Probably best to Invasion then. Get two more forests. And then Thalia's not as backbreaking anymore. Still annoying. But we'll have more mana to work with. So how does this matchup play out? Well, could turn into a bit of a staring contest. Opponent has some mana sinks with the officer. And then Brutal Cathar switching between day and night could exile multiple creatures, especially good against our tokens. And if they have multiple vanguards, they can also pump the team, make it difficult to attack into a large first striker. But if we can just put a bunch of creatures in play and then ultimate a Nissa, that could be good enough too. So it's going to be a close game. Our opponent's definitely off to a great start. Our start was decent since we were on the play with turn two Azusa's many journeys, but we'll have to wait and see how it develops. Another Knight Errant, yep. Yeah. Can they find some removal here? Effects that exile our tokens also don't grow the gruff triplets. Just another Vanguard, initiate, and we found Gala Greeters. So if I were to play Greeters, because of Thalia I don't have enough mana to play Invoke. I could still play Awaken the Woods for two, but I think we need to put some beefy creatures in play. And at this point... I guess Triplets is a more mana efficient move. I guess they're both 6 mana because of Thalia. Alright, let's Invoke then. And then... Don't think we need Reach in this matchup. So we'll go with Vigilance and pass a turn. And then Triplets will be better once we have a Gala Greeters in place so we can trigger all three modes. So hopefully the 4-5s make it difficult for the opponent to attack. Vanguard number 2. Thalia now. 4 power first strike. First strike could actually be an advantage for us if they kill a triplet with it and then grow the other triplets before regular damage. So we'll have to watch out for that interaction. Opponent just kind of emptying their hand here. Skrelv, yeah, Skrelv is certainly powerful in this matchup, giving pro green. So normally lands are colorless, but I think this specifically says green dryad creature tokens, so we wouldn't be able to block an opposing Skrelv activation. Is this a laydown arms, perhaps, to exile a token? I guess they can't cast it because of their own Thalia. Another Knight Errant would be quite painful, yeah. Three Knight Errants. Those are very good. And then now they found another Skrelv and Adlin. We found Nyssa. Okay, so there's still hope. This turn, if I go Greeters, I can awaken for X equals 2. So probably just awaken for the max amount here. Which would be X equals uh, 4 here. And then we would have a ton of forests in play to hopefully set up a lethal attack. Just gotta hope that our opponent doesn't forces to trade off a bunch of creatures. So we could attack here and see if we can transform our invasion. Our opponent's likely to trade, but that would also make an opposing Brutal Cathar top deck less brutal, since they don't get to just exile our 4-5 token for free. So I think it's fine to kind of force a trade here, but I would also be happy to transform our invasion and get an extra mana. Alright, opponent is gonna trade off. So is it time for Gruff Triplets then? Or do we awaken anyways? And then hope that the overrun still gets us there. Triplets would set up some decent blocks on the following turn. So then the opponent may not have any great attacks. And then we can try and prolong the game another turn. If I go for awaken, x equals 4. Yeah, that should still be enough. Alright, fine. We'll see how this plays out. So as long as we're not forced to trade away our entire board and get to untap, we should be good to go. 
Adelon plus Guardian. So that's six toughness on defense. They might use Skrelv on the Knight Errant to get in for extra damage. And then I don't really want to block the 3 1 and lose my likeness, so I'll just take it and then hope for a lethal attack next turn. We found a forest, that's good. So play Nissa. And that's full price. So we can overrun. And this should be enough for lethal. Alright, and there we have it, so yeah, good to see the Awaken the Woods into Nissa Ascended Animus combo. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand is a little bit slow to get on the board. Stomper doesn't block right away, and it doesn't play triplets on the following turn. If we can find a 2-mana ramp card in the meantime, this could work out. If we're up against Monorad Aggro, we probably just lose on the spot. So, yeah, I could see mulliganing and looking for something a little cheaper. Probably best here. Alright, hand is pretty similar, but at least we've got a Galen Greeters. Probably want to keep the Awaken the Woods to go with Anissa. So the question really is Stomper, Triplets, or maybe even Nissa herself. Although it's a perfect way to close out the game. Possible we don't need Nissa when we have Triplets. Although it kind of feels like a waste to get rid of her when we have Awaken the Woods. Gala Greeters making treasure. So maybe it's just triplets over Nissa. And then hope to draw another triplets at some point. Against Black White, triplets can be effective unless there's a sweeper like Sunfall exiling everything. If it's just spot removal, then uh, triplets is pretty effective. Looks like Esper Legends actually with a turn 2 Skrelv. Play Greeters. And then next turn, we'll see if we want to play Stomper. For now, a Rafine. So Skralv could attack and connive. Or they can keep Skralv as protection for Rafine. So this is going to be a pure racing situation, basically, where our opponent's going to build up a huge flyer, and we need to ultimate Nissa before they kill us. And uh, going Stomper, make a treasure, seems reasonable. So next turn, we can double spell Greeters or set up an Awaken the Woods. And yeah, this hand isn't bad at outracing the Legends deck. We're not really drawing cards to trigger an opposing shield roots, Although I guess it could gain the opponent a lot of life with Rafine. But we're also gaining life with Gala Greeters, making treasures. They're not known for having a ton of removal or counter spells. An Airtai Resurrected is a main concern here as a counter spell to a Nissa when we're about to win the game. Okay, they do have turn 4 shield root, unfortunately. So, more worried about the life gain than the life loss here, honestly, but we'll see if uh, we can still set up a lethal Nissa ultimate in time. So if I were to awaken, I could already do it for X equals 4, which means Stomper is also active, or I could play a couple more Greeters. Problem is, if Awaken the Woods gets countered by Artai, then Nissa also looks a lot worse. And I think X equals 4 here is still enough to potentially set up lethal. I don't think we need to go overboard with it. And then we get to trigger greeters all the way. Stomper won't be attacking. And then we'll have to wait and see if our opponent keeps up mana for a potential air tie that we need to bait out first, or if we're in the clear for a Nissa. Let's say we don't draw another land, I can play Nissa using a treasure and one token, 
So that would still leave five attackers all getting at least plus nine plus nine. So yeah, that should be more than enough. Opponent tapping out for Quasa. I guess I could still have interaction like a Soaring City for one mana. And as the settles are opponents at 30, they can use Skralf here as well, either paying two life or using Plaza for mana. So the fact that they didn't use Plaza kind of implies that they might have some uh, interaction. Could just be Night Gancho planning to kill Stomper if we attack, which is no longer going to work if we play Nissa. So I think we just have to go for it. And then if they Sorting City, we go down to four attackers, still getting plus nine, plus nine. So that's still enough. So yeah, I think we have it here. Ultimates. And attack. Maybe like a Soaring City bouncing a Dryad token in response to the ultimate could have been effective, since that not only removes an attacker, but also a forest. But I think we still would have been fine. And yeah, it's just an Igancho. That's not going to cut it. Sweet. Yeah, definitely a close one. Shieldred plus Rafine is a scary combination. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand's just a little bit too top-heavy, I'm afraid. This is better. And then probably just ditch Awaken the Woods. Go Stomper into Stomper into Triplets. And then hope to get to seven lands. Awaken is a way to enable Stomper as well. But I feel like this is the better mix. And we found another Awaken anyways. Green-white. Could this be a poison deck? That's definitely a concern, since we're not going to present any blockers early on. Could be enchantments as well. That looks like an enchantment deck. Okay, but Sage I could channel, but I'll probably need it as a land drop. Companion. And they can double the trigger with Weaver of Harmony. That's acceptable. Killing Weaver in response to a companion being played. Could have been sort of reasonable too, but I think the land drop's still going to be more important. Ramping the opponent with Boseju, also not the best plan. Kami of Transients. And also Vacation. Glad that they're firing it off this early instead of waiting to double the trigger with Weaver of Harmony. Could imply that they have another copy, of course. And another Awaken the Woods. So Stomper versus Awaken for three. I think that's an easy choice. This ramps us for three. I don't think we'll be able to set up a lethal Nissa yet. But we can now use the extra mana to either play another bigger Awaken the Woods. Calyx is scary when it can threaten to copy ossification. Gotta hope they don't have an aura here to put on one of their creatures. Weaver could also copy the Calyx trigger to get an extra plus one counter. So if that's their turn, I'm not too upset. Okay, so attack me for seven. I'll take it, fall to nine, and then we need to survive another turn. Forest is good. So, could play triplets and topiary stomper. And then I would still be dead to ossification, copy the trigger with Weaver, but I don't think we're beating that realistically. If I awaken the woods again, I could do it for X equals 7. And that's of course better against spot removal as well. And then we'll have all the forests we need to set up a lethal Nissa. Just gonna be afraid of our opponent getting enough counters on the Trampler to force us to chump a bunch, but... 4-4 Kami, even with two extra counters, still far from lethal. So I'm kind of liking Awaken the Woods for 7. Even if I have to chump with three creatures, we'll have 7 Dryads back, plus 5 Forests, so 12. Yeah, that should be more than enough. Okay, let's go for it. 
But yeah, audacity is still certainly a concern. So hopefully they don't find one. Counter on Kami, so they are building up the Trampler. We'll see if Weaver copies. It does not, so they need that mana for a different effect. Another Weaver of Harmony to pump the team. And then Calyx still needs to be chumped to prevent them from copying another enchantment. So, yeah, triple chump. Take 7 down to 2 seems like the play. But now we get to trample over for lethal. And that does it, it's awesome. Okay, we're on the play with what looks like a very decent hand. Greeters into Awaken the Woods. Unless we find something better to play on turn 3. And that ramps out our invoke. Okay. Could be down to tribute, especially if we draw another land. So we can Awaken the Woods for 2 on the following turn. Up against... A Naya deck, also vacation on two. All right, goodbye, greeters. Still gonna tribute here. And then hope to draw land for Awaken the Woods. And Leyline Binding is next. Our opponent does not want us to have any fun. So this could be the five color domain deck as well. So just a single Dryad token. Nissa can also destroy enchantments, so if I draw land I could play a cheap Nissa just to use the minus one. Find another triplets instead. Let's keep building up our mana then. So I'm more likely to deploy Nissa to try and get some immediate value as opposed to playing a triplets into a board wipe. Opponents got their own Nissa. Interesting. They're gonna make a token then. So how does that change the game? We've got six mana, can play triplets. We would have six forests in play if I draw another forest. So then I could play Nissa, setting up the ultimates with pretty much only the triplets attacking, getting plus six plus six each. May not be enough for lethal, I'm afraid. But what's the alternative? Nissa to destroy an enchantment at this point doesn't seem all that relevant. So yeah, we'll play the triplets. And I would love to trade them off, but it's gonna be tricky. Pun might be sitting on a wandering emperor here, so I don't necessarily want to attack with any of my creatures. Also don't have any particularly great attacks either. So, got a couple options. Could also go double Gala Greeters. Just to get the treasures so we're guaranteed to play Nissa next turn. And then we don't get as many bodies in play to set up our Overrun is a problem. If I could go Greeters into Invoke the Ancients it would have been a little bit more appealing. But that's not the case. Maybe double greeters is still fine. I guess we could see a binding and response to deny the treasure token. But I have to build up my mana since a lethal Nissa ultimate at this point is our most realistic win condition. Alright, no leyline binding, so we get to make a treasure. And then we're starting to go wide to set up our overrun effect. So yeah, would still be only six forests with a forest of the top. Especially if our opponent has a Wandering Emperor to exile one of my creatures, that may not be enough for lethal. There's a mountain, could see an Itali here. Herd Migration making a bunch of 3-3s, three fair enough. So that's 9 more toughness, 6 more from Nissa making a token. And now Awaken the Woods, alright, I think I just have to wait one more turn. 
Nessa can't ultimate yet unless they proliferate somehow. And now with an awaken for x equals 5, we can certainly set up a lethal Nessa on the following turn. We get to trigger greeters a whole bunch. And now we have all the forests we need. At 23, Furpon goes for an all-out attack. I can mostly take it. Briefcase is acceptable. Okay, another Nissa, but at this point we're just going for the overrun. We've got 10 forests in play, so I would be shocked if this weren't enough. And our opponent takes it! Awesome! Our damage going up in the triple digits here. Sweet. So yeah, we were off to a shaky start this game, but we were lucky to find another Awaken the Woods to set up our lethal Nissa ultimate. And that seems to be the main way that our deck wins games, is curving Awaken the Woods into a Nissa, which was true with previous builds of Mono Green that I've tested. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure if Gruff Triplets is necessarily contributing a whole lot to this archetype. It is at its best in those black mid-range matchups that we did not get to see today, where the opponent is mostly relying on spot removal, and then having a bunch of 3-3s that can also survive an opposing Gixxus command is quite nice, especially alongside Tribute to the World Tree drawing us multiple cards. So yeah, that's maybe the matchup where Triplets is still worth including but uh, I'm potentially okay with cutting a few copies and making room for more cheap ramp cards or other card draw effects. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.